first I'll just tell you a very brief personal history of this approach to economics. Uh, it began in the early 1990s the, when uh, the internet was relatively new. I guess we were talking earlier, uh, Al Gore had invented the internet, as you know. <laughs> um, a discussion group uh, online was created, maybe one of the first, maybe the first, I don't know. It was called Post Keynesian Thought. And uh, post Keynesian economics follows John Maynard Keynes, and it's what we call a heterodox approach to economics. It's outside the mainstream. But all the, the top heterodox economists uh, around the world were on this uh, discussion group. And this guy came on, and he started saying things that um, on the surface seemed very strange, very bizarre. <coughs> but uh, as I read his comments and thought about them, I could see that he was just using different terminology. That a lot of things he was, sa he was saying existed in various branches of heterodox economics. <clears throat> and so, online, uh, he would say things and most people respond, this is crazy. And then a few of us sort of started catching on. We said, oh yeah, that sounds like, okay, Hyman Minsky. That sounds like George Frederick Knapp, and so on. And so he started communicating uh, with us. And one of the ideas he had um, that became very important uh, to opening up this new approach to economics is he was a hedge fund manager who specialized in trading bonds. And sometime in the early 1980s, he said, you know, the Fed sells bonds. We call it monetary policy. It's called an open market operation. And the Treasury sells bonds. We call that borrowing. We say it's part of fiscal policy. He said, functionally, they are identical. They're the same operation by the government, just two different branches, the central bank branch and the Treasury branch. But for the non-government sector, the impact is exactly the same. Okay, And so when he wrote that, it just opened up our minds. We say, we've been looking at government finance wrong. Okay? And virtually all economists have got it wrong. So I'll come back to that and explain <coughs> uh, why this was so important. Uh, he wrote a little, pan uh, well, a thick pamphlet called Soft Currency Economics. That was the first publication that started to lay out this mm -hmm. approach to um, economics and specifically to government finance. And um, then I wrote the book that uh, John mentioned, Understanding Modern Money, in 1998 that came out. And so that was the first academic publication of this approach to economics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to meet uh, every year uh, with Warren and we would say, how many people now understand what we're talking about? You know, it, it took about five years to get up to the fingers on one hand. <laughs> and 10 years, we were up to, we had to use both hands. Okay. Uh, it was very rough going, very slow. Um, until the blogosphere. Now, just when you go home tonight, Google modern money theory. You're going to get literally millions. There are thousands of people around the world, most of them not in academics, a okay? uh, vast majority not economists, <clears throat> who could give a pretty good summary of what modern money theory is all about. So, and, and there actually are political movements now that call themselves modern money theory, okay? for example in Italy. There actually are several rival political movements that all call themselves modern money theory. Um, which reminds you of Monty Python. Right? <clears throat> so anyway, what I'm saying is it's just, it, it took off with the um, blogosphere. And in uh, 2012, I uh, wrote a book, I call it The Primer, so it's a modern money primer, where I tried to explain it to a non-academic audience, and uh, that has been updated in, for 2015. And I'm told the book is out, I don't have a copy, because they mailed them all to Kansas City. Uh, but I think it is now for sale. 
Let me first summarize the basic conclusions, then I'll very briefly go through what we call history of thought, that is, the intellectual origins of the ideas. Uh, because actually, most of what's in modern money theory is not new. It was just forgotten. It was lost. It was lost over the past 40 to 50 years. It got lost. 